hopefully those questions were not too bad. Now we're gonna break down so you guys can understand how um, the right answer is the right answer. So let's look at the first one. All right, when I look at questions, I like to pull up the keywords. So looking at this one, I see that the word best is underlined, so that's gonna be important. And then I see represents the principle of separation of powers. Separation of powers is one of those principles of government that we talked about, saying that the three branches each have different jobs. So now let's check out our answers. The preservation of the states is indispensable. Hmm. Okay. The purse and the sword must not be in the same hands. Hmm. That's talking about two things not being in the same hands. That makes me think about how the legislative branch has a job making sure the money's taken care of, and the sword might be kind of war like the executive branch being the commander in chief. The people cannot know or judge the characters of candidates. Hmm, that doesn't really seem like something I mentioned in the principles of government. Look to the votes in Congress, and most of them stand divided by the geography of the country. Again, the only one to me that sounds like separation of powers, those different responsibilities, is B. The purse and the sword must not be in the same hands. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay, um, so whenever I see a big text box like this, um, I like to read the excerpt. Okay, so we have two excerpts. Article one, that all government of right originates from the people. They have the right to alter, reform, or abolish their form of government. Article 24, that no man ought to be taken or imprisoned but by the judgment of his peers or by the law of the land. Now the question says which of these constitutional principles is described in Article 1? So guess what? Do I have to know about Article 24? No. I do not even have to pay attention to that. They're only asking me about Article 1. So which of these constitutional principles is described in Article 1 of the Maryland Declaration of Rights? A, the people should have equal protection under the law. Now I see people up here too, but equal protection is the idea that everyone is held to the same standard of the law. State governments and the federal government share powers, okay? I think that's federalism. Um, which is that concept, right, where, the, that where state governments and federal governments share powers. The people in a democratic society give their consent to be governed. Hmm, that was a principle that we talked about, saying that people have to give their A-OK -okay to be a part of a government. And each branch of the government has powers over the other branches. That's separation of powers, which we just talked about in the last part. So looking at these answers, I'm going to say that, that all government of right originates from the people is going to be C. The people in a democratic society give their consent to be governed. All right. So again, we got another excerpt. It says, after dividing the several classes of power as they may in their nature be legislative, executive, or judiciary, the next and most difficult task is to provide some practical security for each against the invasion of the others. Now again, I'm seeing these keywords, legislative, executive, and judiciary, right? Those are the three branches, right? Um, and they're saying that some practical security for each against the invasion of the other. Hmm, let's see our options. Due process, that's the concept about making sure everyone can get the right to a fair trial. Popular sovereignty is the rule of the people. Checks and balances is the idea that each of the branches can check the other one. And representative democracy is that idea that people get to pick their leaders. So seeing that this is mentioned in the three branches, and they're talking about checking on each other. C, number three, is the correct answer. Rock and roll, Wildcats. All right. So which, ooh, which of these examples best reflects the principle of representative democracy? Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Well, that's OK, because I'm just going to underline it. So representative democracy, right? That's that idea that we get to pick people to represent us, because um, we can't all maybe be there at the same time. So it says, citizens of a town vote on all government issues. Hmm. 
on all government issues. That to me doesn't sound like anyone's representing my ideas. That sounds like I would be representing my ideas. The leader of a country makes all government decisions. Hmm, that doesn't sound like any representation either. That's one person making all the decisions. A judge finds a defendant guilty of a crime. Hmm, judges aren't really involved in that aspect in a representative democracy. And the last one is an elected official proposes a bill in the state legislature. Elected official is the key word in understanding that we pick someone to represent us. So D is that correct answer. Which of these is part of the legislative branch of the United States government? What did I say? L for legislative, right? L for laws. So the cabinet, they're the president's posse. So they're not going to be involved in the legislative branch. The president is in charge, he's the CEO of the executive branch. Supreme Court, they're in the judicial branch. So that leaves us with the House of Representatives. Remember, they're one part of the United States Congress with the Senate. So D is that correct answer. Which of these people is the leader of the executive branch of the federal government? That CEO, right? <laughs> federal government's going to be that national government. The mayor, they're in the executive branch at the local level. A senator, they're going to be in the legislative branch. A governor is going to be at the executive branch at the state level. But it's the president who's the executive leader at the federal level. Which of these officials is responsible for making laws? A federal judge. Remember, J for judicial, J for judge. They're not going to be a part of this lawmaking process. The governor of a state, remember, they're part of that CEO in the executive branch. A United States senator, hmm, right? They're in the legislative branch. They could be still in the game. Secretary of Defense, they're part of the cabinet. They're not going to be involved. So the correct answer is C, a United States senator. Ooh, a political cartoon. On the HSA, you're going to see a lot of these. Now, the way I break these down is I first look at what I see. So I see a judge, and then I see two buildings. And they look to me like something important, like something I might see in D.C. And then I look at the words, okay? I see White House and Capitol and Supreme Court. Now I have to think about what does this all mean? What it looks to me is that the judge is representing the Supreme Court, and they are above the Capitol and the White House. The White House has the executive branch, and the Capitol houses the legislative branch. So this is saying to me that the judicial branch is above these two branches. So let me look at our choices. It says the cartoon is commenting on the power of federal supremacy. Federal supremacy would be D.C. being in charge. And I don't think that that's what this is talking about. Judicial review. Hmm. That's a power that only the Supreme Court has. And in this cartoon, the Supreme Court is above the other two branches of government. Executive privilege would be talking about the executive branch. And congressional oversight would be talking about the legislative branch. So the correct answer is B, judicial review. In 1908, Theodore Roosevelt said, oh, if I could be president and Congress too for just 10 minutes, which principle of the United States government was frustrating President Roosevelt when he made